Um, yeah, hi guys, welcome to this car talk. Um, in this one, we're going to be talking about our dream car garage. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, because one thing we did want to say about was um, car talk has now become a podcast, not just on YouTube, but also on Spotify. Um, it's running a little bit behind um, YouTube, so at the minute we will be releasing a car talk on Spotify on the 1st, the 11th and the 21st of every month until we catch up. So it will start off by with all the season ones and then it will until it gets up to season two where we are. After that we'll release it the same day as we release it here on YouTube. Um, so it just means it's a good thing we thought we'd um, sort of branch out into a new platform because then you can listen to us rather than having to watch. So if you're working, um, if you're jogging, anything like that, and you'd like to listen to Car Talk, you can now. So that's one. Or if thing. you find our handsome faces too distracting. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> or my beard. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I say I hope you guys enjoy. And uh, back to the Car Talk we're in, we were going to talk about our dream car garage, yes. as I said. Um, but we we're going to limit it to five, yeah, um, five uh, cars in our in our garage. Um, I mean, because like I say, if we don't, then between us, we could have a car that was a thousand car a garage. Oh, easy, yeah, yeah. and we'd probably still find more we'd want. <laughs> so yeah, we limited it to five, and it was five different um, sort of genres or yeah. topics, wasn't it? I say, did you want to introduce? Yes. Yeah. So we've gone for our dream car, which is obviously the car we'd want above every other car. We went for an off roader. Went for an EV because they're so prevalent now. Yeah. Um, we went for a classic car and a daily driver, which would just be no matter what it, no matter what it be, that would be the one we drive on a on a regular basis. Yeah. To keep um, the other cars nice. <laughs> yeah. And some of them may cross over into different categories or everything like that, and you may go, "Oh, that was that could be a classic as well," kind of thing. But uh, yeah, we just thought these are the these are the ones we're going to pick, and you pipe down. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd love to hear from you guys on this. Um, Find us, I mean, like I'm on Instagram, TikTok, we, but we, one thing we have got where you can get a bit more involved is our Facebook group. So yeah, tell us either there or in the comments below this, let us know what your five car garage yeah, would be. Yeah, definitely. We, we love hearing from you guys and it's, uh, yeah, it's always t nice talking to other petrol heads. So <laughs> Might make us change some of our choices as well. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... If we start off with the first category, I'll say, did you want to go first? Yeah, um, go for it. Because the first category was our dream car. Well, mine has and always will be, and I probably mentioned it in other uh, episodes of Car Talk, is the Ford Escort Cosworth. Yeah. Um, always been a lifelong Ford fan, always loved the Escorts, and then, <clears throat> you know, they came out in the early 90s when we were both kids, and the styling, the rally heritage, you know, all the... That you know everything that came with it, you know, it was always in car media because they were mm. talked about as being the same insurance brackets of Ferrari. They were the most stolen yeah. car, they were most desirable at the time, and yeah. you know. Because I didn't realise about the stolen car thing. I remember them being the same insurance group. It was I can't remember which Ferrari what it was at the time. I, I think it was, it was a three five five. I was just going to say I didn't know if it was that, but yeah, because I, I remember I always remember reading that, and I mean, like I say, it was one of those things. I remember from when we were at school together, yeah. you, that was always your favourite car yeah. back then. Because, I mean, we've known each other since year seven or yeah. eight at school. So, it's uh, yeah, it's been a fair old time, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? So, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, like I said, it's always been, that, I have to admit, that's definitely yeah. been your dream car. Because I've I kind of always been one of those people that kind of bounces between them. So. <laughs> well, it was the Whale Tail Spoiler. It was, you know, the performance. You know, Jeremy Clarkson had one. It was, you know, they were just just so in your face and mm. I just absolutely loved them and you know being a fan of the Escort I was just like well that's the ultimate version of an Escort you know had the Cosworth mm. engine like we said the rally her you know did so well in rallying and everything, th everything it did. like that I fell in love with it because after it's a car that I love it's, it's not actually on my list but it's a car that I love because <laughs> um, I will never forget that you had the white and the blue didn't you the Ford blue yeah. and the white livery yeah. on it on the yeah. rally car and it was yeah. just yeah it was a wicked car and I loved it from I, I love that was my favourite car in the Colin yeah. McRae rally game. Yeah, <laughs> the, the original one, Colin McRae one before dirt and everything, <laughs> and um, yeah, beautiful car. So really good choice. I like that one. <laughs> What's your choice for your dream car then, Dor? Well, my one because originally we did do this car talk. Um, yeah, sort of spoiler. We did do this car talk a while back, but we ended up losing it in the big data loss incident we had. Um, but so I've changed mine ever so slightly. But right, it's, it's the same car, but just the newer model, which is the Dodge Challenger SRT Demon One Hundred and Seventy. Because the, uh... the One Hundred and Seventy wasn't <laughs> yeah. out when we originally filmed no. the last one. <laughs> but 
just because I've always been a muscle car fan. Yeah. The Dodge Challenger, the classic one, was always one of my favourite muscle cars. I mean, I love the I love the Charger, but the Challenger I always thought was like the underdog that one because yeah. I mean the Charger that was in. Dukes of Hazard, yeah. Blaze, Fast and Furious. It was always the hero car, whereas yeah. you had the Challenger, which wasn't in that many. It was in um, Vanishing Point, which is a lesser known film. And um, they, they did use one in Bullet, yeah. no, Death Proof, or whatever it was, uh, and, Tarantino's film. But And a, a lot of them were used in like, <coughs> um, you know, like cop shows and yeah. some pieces like that. It's like, oh, you know, this is our nice fast car kind of thing. That's it. But I mean, I always loved the sound of a V8 is my favourite sounding engine. It's one of my favourite sounds in the world. Yeah. A V8, you just can't beat it. Awesome. And um, but yeah, the Dodge Challenger when they re-released that, it was just one of those ones. It was just like, yes, they got that so right. Yeah. It just looks muscle. And the noise from the supercharger, you get yeah. that whine. And the fact that this one's got like a thousand horsepower yeah. is absolutely unbelievable. And you do like quarters. The, the quarter mile is so fast that it's banned from doing drag racing as a standard road going car, which is just, that's so badass and it's so Dodge. Yeah. I just think Dodge is my favourite. I am I'm a Mopar guy a little bit if I had to be, if I had to choose between yeah. Ford and Mopar, a little bit more Mopar. Um, but yeah, the, just the, Dodge have got really badass yeah. name for themselves and they proved it with that car and this is... Well, they called it the Demon as well, you know, you, yeah. can't, you can't go much better than that, can you? That's it. And I mean, they, and this one is just... I it is unbelievable and like we said actually recently in a previous um car talk because i was re-listening to them the yeah. other day and we said about cars possibly coming out and having one big last hurrah yeah. before evs are mandatory um and this is dodge's one yeah. this is their this is their magnum opus and it is what a way to go out oh just yeah a stunning car it'll pop a wheelie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just yeah all that power and I mean, of course, because it's modern, it's not on old cart springs or anything anymore. Nope. So it actually will go around a corner. <laughs> so yeah, that was 100%. That's my dream car. <laughs> just everything about it is just, yeah, brilliant. So what about your off-roader then? Um, my off-roader, I went for one which is actually, well, it was one of Richard Hammond's favourites, but he prefers the the different version. I can't remember what it's oh, called now. The Nemesis. Nemesis. But I like the Bowler Wildcat because yeah. it's based around the Defender. The Defender's just cool. I remember when um, that first came out, I was just like, that is an awesome... Because mm. not only because of how it looked and, you know, you know, I had a V8, so it sounded amazing everything like that, but it was just so capable. Yeah, that was it. It's basically like a, a Paris Dakar car that you can yeah. buy out the box for yourself. Um, I mean, I've always loved Defenders. And uh, yeah, brilliant things like that. But this thing is just something else. It's not. It's not your average defender. If you've never seen one, have a look. Look at one up. Yeah, They're absolutely incredible. And I heard that apparently you can drop them forty foot onto the nose without damaging the chassis or yeah, without it breaking. <laughs> and I mean, if that doesn't say anything, you, the car would break you before it broke itself. Yeah, which is just brilliant. Because <laughs> uh, what about your one? Well, mine is nothing particularly special, but mine's more of a nostalgia one. I went for the Suzuki SJ. Oh, wicked. That's a really good one. Because <laughs> they're funky little cars, and mm. to be fair, there was loads of about when we were kids. Yeah. They, they um, were the, you know, you you know, if you saw somebody with a 4x4, like you'd possibly see somebody with a Jimny now kind of thing, that was the car back then was the Suzuki SJ was... Yeah. You know, well, people were people were buying them when we were getting into buying cars and bits and pieces and doing them up and off-roading them. And I always thought, because of the size, and they were <coughs> very capable vehicles as well. Yeah, well, they, they definitely were, because just how light they yeah. were and everything like that, weren't they? And I just saw they were funky little cars, and I thought, yeah, go on, if I'm, if I'm going to have an off-road, I want it to be, you know, don't need it to be fast necessarily, but fun, definitely. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, by a weird sheer twist of fate, funny enough, me and one of my friends and colleagues were actually talking about SJs today, yeah. and we were saying about how, like, you get the big heavy stuff sometimes, like the the uh, Range Rovers and things like that yeah. that were around at the same sort of time, whereas they'd start getting bogged down and stuck and things like that just because of the weight of them. Yeah. Even though they had the power, they had the weight. The SJ, a 1300 engine, because it was so light, it would be going ding, 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 yeah. ding, going past them and that. Was wicked little uh, trucks, to be honest. So it's, um, yeah, definitely. That's I, That was a curveball. After that, <laughs> that, I wasn't expecting that. That was really good. <laughs> well, to segue on to our next one, staying mm. with the fun thing, and I've gone for a similar thing with my EV. I was going to say, what's, what's your EV one? And I've gone for the Honda E. They are funky little cars. Yeah. I have to, when that came out, I'm not... You probably gathered from some of our other car talks, but I'm not the biggest EV fan yet. But that's a cool looking car <laughs> i know everybody slates them because the range is terrible and this that and everything else compared to a lot of the other cars and especially for the price they are yeah but when it first got when you first saw the original design for it 
I mean, it's not too far dissimilar to what it is now. Yeah. But I just looked at it and went, that is an awesome looking little car, that. Yeah. And then you go inside and you've got, you know, you've got the um, cameras for wing mirrors. You've got that screen that goes across the entire dash. Yeah. And, and you know, it was just, I just thought, yeah, if you're going to have something like that, and, you know, I would only really use, only be able to use it to go to work and back kind of thing. I, I wouldn't want to go long distance in it, but... Every time I get it, I think I just go, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Well, to be honest, for that one, I have to admit, the one thing I like and one thing I think Honda's done with that that I haven't seen anybody else do yet is the fact they took some of the styling cues from their early stuff because it reminded yes. me of the early, like the earliest Civics. And then yeah. you look at like the front end of it looks very much like a modern version of that. And I love how Honda have done that where they haven't gone like a lot of the newer cars with EVs. They've just tried to make them look like spaceships. Yeah, this is and the thing. Is it, it looks like... Yeah, like you say, it doesn't look futuristic, but no. it is. Yeah, and it's like really chic and retro looking yeah. for what it is, which is great. And it's and like you said, it's still got all the big screen, the camera, mirrors, yeah. things like that. Lots of modern tech on it, but they've they kept it looking like a car, which yeah. I really love. So yeah, I have to admit that's a really good one. What about and yours? Was, well, my one, again, me being me, I chose the Tesla Model S, but the ludicrous package one, <laughs> because power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the 60 on that is insane. It's like un it's under three seconds, I believe. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And and that is one thing Tesla have got right, um, is the performance range they've got. And I have to admit, like I say, as much as I'm not a huge EV fan, you can't argue with it. The performance on that thing is unbelievable. And I mean... My um my friend Chris, funny enough, who's Maserati, is in one of our walk around videos. Mm. Um, speaking to him about it, he's been in one, and he said it made him feel funny. He said because really? the, the acceleration in it was so fast. He said he, after he got out, it made him feel a bit wobbly legged and everything. It was just crazy. That's so awesome. I do it, and again, it's me being me. It's not really for any other reason than other. the Tesla. The Teslas look nice. Well, that Tesla looks nice. Yeah, <laughs> and um, but. Other than that, for me, it's all about the power. It's just if I'm going to have an EV, I want a really quick one. <laughs> well, the other thing as well is Tesla have actually got <clears throat> the charging infrastructure right as well. You know, there are yeah. you will see a Tesla charger more often than you will see any others. Yeah, I mean, that does seem to be starting to change because I have noticed that they've started putting posts in in different places, like mm -hmm. just on the side of uh, local seaside yeah. near us, Port Call. They've started putting charging post there like lamp posts which is kind of cool so i do think that will eventually change yeah. but tesla were definitely there first oh yeah and um, you know just the fact that it tells you when the next tesla charge is going to turn up on route and everything like that and you just go mm. you know just for the, the peace fast, of mind the fast charging as well i mean you can yeah. charge them up to 80 percent in 20 minutes yeah so i mean i like yeah so i mean that's i mean that stuff as well and their range isn't bad i think if you're driving them sensibly the range, the range is, is, pretty, like, is you, probably can, the best on tesla i'd say at the moment yeah i mean i could jump in that and drive it to devon so i mean it probably yeah. would be an okay daily driver as well but like say for an ev i would just go ludicrous package because I want to see how fast they can make yeah. them. <laughs> but so we've gone from the future. To what would you be your classic? Well, my classic, and this is where some people may argue it's not yet a classic because it's it could be class of retro rather than a classic. But I mean, it's thirty years old. Well, thirty three years old now yeah. would be the classic, the mental and just a massive storm in a teacup. Lotus Carlton. Oh, definitely Vauxhall classic. Lotus Carlton, yeah. I mean, well, when I, I used to work at Vauxhall many moons ago, and when we were there, a lot of the guys used to refer to it as the Reaper because yeah. the amount of them that ended up upside down in hedges, ditches, and just how many people it helped take to the other side. Yeah. Really. <laughs> but what an amazing car. It was like 3.2, straight six, turbo charge engine, and had mental power, and I believe it was the fastest four-door saloon for years, for yeah, it would do 100, 177 mile an hour, I think. Yeah, I say I knew it was up near there, so I thought it was 180 something, but I couldn't remember. But the car I mean, that the car that the government tried to ban. Exactly. Yeah, and our government doesn't ban for anybody that might be watching from the states. <laughs> we we get skylines, we get lots of other things. And I'm trying to rub your nose in it, but I'm just telling you, we don't ban cars. We are like, trying to rub your nose in it. <laughs> yeah, we we don't ban cars <laughs> in this country. <laughs> Not very often, and they tried to ban that one. Mainly because they were quite easy to steal, like Vauxhalls of the yeah. time, and they had the Lotus performance, so they were yeah. outrunning a lot of cop cars. That was the they, main thing: was the, the police just couldn't keep up with them, could they? No, and there was actually a famous one, wasn't there? The one that keeps popping up. People keep saying they found it at the bottom of a lake that was stolen, used in ram raid in a few places, and they kept outrunning the police in it. And it had a private plate, like WR12 or something like oh, that. Right. Or, I can't remember what that one was called. You, 
I'll put it in the comments below. You can look it up then. Um, but it was the famous one, and it went missing. And yeah. then there's people say they found it at the bottom of a lake. I've seen it up for sale, and then other people have said that's not the original one. Yeah. They've just put a plate on another one they found. It's, but yeah, there's a lot of myth around that yeah. car. But I just love it again for the performance, the speed, just and the noise they made. Oh, oh insane! And they took. And they took a family, well, it was an executive saloon yeah. car, and they made it into something that was an absolute weapon. The looks of it was stunning, the way it went was stunning. It was just they they took that car and just made it into something really special. And they got was, everything right with it, didn't they? Yeah, so, I mean, and like I say, it was, came out in 1990. So, yeah. I mean, you could say it's not a classic in the same regards to, like, a 60s E-Type, yeah. but to me, that's the classic I want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, mine's mine's a little bit different to that. Mine's mine's a little bit of an odd choice, and it mm. was, it came from an old car book. Oh, really? And I remember going through, and you, you remember, you know, you could always buy those books of classic cars, and they ninety nine percent of it would all be the same stuff. Yeah, I still got one or two <laughs> in my bookshelf. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember seeing about the Porsche nine one four, and I oh. remember it because it they referred to it as the ugly duckling. Yeah, I was just about to say that, but I didn't want to cut you off. <laughs> And to be fair, I can understand why, because when you think of Porsches, you think of the 911s and you mm. think of the way they look and every, you know, like every 911 looks great. Yeah. And I don't then, think I've ever seen one I don't like. No. <laughs> and then this one was like, oh. Yeah. And, but f <clears throat> for that reason, I really liked it. And then, you know, reading up on a bit more, you know, there were 1.7 models came with a with a Volkswagen engine, yeah, which still fine by me. Love Volkswagen, and then the. If you really want to wind up a Porsche owner, turn around and ask them how their Volkswagen's doing. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was the nine one four six, which was a two liter engine, which was actually a Porsche derived engine. So if yeah. you went for the standard nine one four, it was a Volkswagen engine. Then the nine one four six was a Porsche engine. Mm. But even though, you know, like ninety. Probably ninety five percent of people look at it and go, "That's not a proper Porsche X Y Z." I just thought, "No, I, I like an underdog." And yeah, and to be honest, it's one of those cars. That was one of the cars that kind of grew on me a little bit because, funny enough, for a game, I had it in Forza. Not even it wasn't even Horizon. It was Forza Two. Yeah, and I had it. And to be honest, I because you could that was one of the few games you could put your own livery on. And I think I was calling it Wolf Kiff Workshop back then. Yeah, and I had it as a loan car because again because it was just a yeah. little ugly little Porsche compared to a lot of the others but I tell you it was a lovely car to have on there it was yeah. brilliant and I have to and it's one of those ones again I think it's very there's a couple of Porsches like there's that one there's the 928 and yep. there was the 944 that were seen as ugly cars not real yeah. Porsches they had a bit of stigma about them but again to look at I don't think Porsche have really made an ugly car even no. I mean even people that don't like the KM the KN and things yeah. like that again yeah, a lot of the people that don't like it is because it's not their style of car. Yeah. They're the same people that don't like Range Rovers or don't like anything else like that because they don't like SUVs. Yeah. But for an SUV, it's a nice looking SUV. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Porsche are a very, I think it's always a winning combination because it's, um, which is very good. But I mean, well, I mean, these would be the ones, <clears throat> I was going to say, these cars would be the ones that would live in our garages. Yes. So moving on to our final thing, um, the daily driver. Yeah. What was your one? I thought I'd go completely opposite to all my other choices, mm. and I'll have some mental. <laughs> and I'm going to have a TVR Cerbera. Oh, wicked cars. I love TVR. And Much like all the other cars on my list, they were the cars that were about when we were growing up. Yep. And, you know, you don't see as many of them as you saw possibly the others, but it was always, you know... <laughs> they were always in car media because the performance on them was mental. The style, yeah. They were beautiful. Be any TVR is a beautiful car. Yeah. Even the paintwork yeah. is beautiful. Because yeah. we were saying about earlier, weren't we? Because we, 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 we do talk about cars yeah. outside of car talk. <laughs> we were talking about earlier that yeah. TVR, one of the few people that you could get a flip paint job. You yeah. have to get pearlescent paint from factory and things like that. Yeah. Just, everything about them is just, oh. <laughs> they had the most glorious sounding V8 engines. Mm. And oh, yeah. yeah. You know, for a car that everybody went on about how poor the handling was and everything like that, they do 190 mile an hour. And I just think, <laughs> you know, just to, every day to wake up and get in the car and go, this could be the last one. <laughs> you know, that, that's what I want for my daily drive. Yeah, get a bit of adrenaline on the way to work. <laughs> yeah. And to be honest, you would turn heads everywhere you went in that. Not just for oh, yeah. the, the sound, the looks, everything. You just be, People just be going, you lucky bugger. Yeah, and... Um, 
Yeah, because they were supercars, really, yeah. weren't they? But they again, they were one of the underdogs, weren't they? They yeah. weren't a Lambo, weren't a Ferrari, and they were the car that probably most people that were actually in money would turn their nose up at yeah. if you turn up at their country club in. But but it would probably destroy most of the cars that they decided would you know were the would, better ones to have. You yeah, know, they so may have a Lamborghini or Ferrari, and you'd still be going past them. Exactly. So that's, so that's a awesome that's, choice. I probably wouldn't be able to afford to run it, but hmm. when I could, hmm. once a year. Well, I say I say <laughs> the daily one is it doesn't matter how much it costs to run it. No. Just what could you if you your dream is like yeah, yeah. in a dream car garage, there's no such thing as cost. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that that would be my thing. That I know for a fact that the same as the Escort Cosworth, there's every time I'd sit in it, I would just smile from ear to ear for the hmm. for the entire way there and the entire way back. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, that last comment has kind of made my mind up on mine because I had a choice of two. Yeah. Because um, I couldn't decide. Um, but I'm going to go for my second choice, which for me is the Audi RS6 Avant, but the previous model, not the latest model, yep. the previous one that had the Lambo V10 in it. Nice. And um, that is just because that V10, the noise, stunning. And like I say, this is why I say that there's no cost in the Dream yeah. Park garage, because I know that they cost about a £1,000 a corner every time you need the brakes to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, just a lovely car, because they made a 190 horsepower estate car, which is what the Avant is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I could still fit all the stuff in we need to get. I could fit yeah. my dog in the boot. I could take the kids to whatever clubs they want to go to, but I could still do 0 to 60 in an eye watering yeah. tight at speed. And it would just, yeah. And again, it would put that smile on my face every time. Yeah. And they're, they're beautiful to look at. Noise yes. is stunning and it's practical as hell. So, yeah. um, yeah, that would be my daily, because I mean, and just in case you are wondering, the one that I've taken off a list for that one was a Dodge Ram Cummins engine diesel yeah. one, because I love my Shogun, um, I love my 4x4, and if it wasn't for the astronomical cost of fuel, that would be a perfect yeah. daily, <laughs> but, but that, that one gets yeah. kind of left... Well, my, my other choice was a little bit more economic, and I, was, <laughs> and I went for a classic Mini, in particular the 1275 GT. Lovely. And as much as I would... Love to have that as my day driver. I just thought, nah. Mm. I, all my all my other ones are fairly. Yeah. I thought go for saying nuts. Because I did, I kind of went the other way around. Everything was about power until I got to the Dodge Cummins yeah. diesel. Well, one, I mean that has got a ridiculous amount of torque. Yeah. But I have found, like I say, chucking the driving around in my Shogun is great daily driver, but it does cost the earth to run. Yeah. But it's. Um, but yeah, I do find a 4x4 is quite good for taking the dog out, yep. sorting out things for the kids, things like that. So that's why I was thinking Dodge Ram. But again, I think the Audi would be better for yeah. me because it's an estate car because yeah. you're not having to worry about covering the pickup back. And I don't want one of those truckman tops because I don't like the look of them. <laughs> Personal choice, but I think it just makes it look like a gigantic caravan. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we added another thousand cars to our list... Mm -hmm. we'll call it a day there i think i think so yeah and i was gonna say so yeah let us know what yours are underneath i hope you've enjoyed uh watching us and listening to us if you are yes. a spotify listener yeah and let us know if you listen to us on spotify yeah and i was saying um yeah we will see you in the next video cheers